Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I wanted to give you an update of what's been going on at our homestead. We've just moved in about a month ago. Some things are working really great, in fact, pretty much everything's working really great, but there are some things that are challenges I want to share that with you. If you haven't watched the series about building this whole structure, I'll you know, you don't have to. I'm going to give you a tour of the entire place as well. It'll kind of catch you up on sort of what we've been doing, what we've been trying to achieve here. First off, right over here, you can see we have this uh, shed structure. Now, the primary reason the shed structure was built is actually for the panels that are on the roof. Uh, these are solar hot water panels, and we had to mount them somewhere. I didn't want to put them up on the roof over here because there's going to be solar electric panels on, on the roof of the house. Uh, this roof over here, which is covered in snow, is a, a greenhouse roof, and you don't want to cover that up with panels. So I needed some place to locate these panels. Now, I could have just built a scaffold or some kind of a structure to hold them up, but I figured if I'm going to go through all the trouble of putting in footings for that and building all that, I might as well build some walls underneath it and, and create a structure where I can store some things. And I think I did a pretty... Uh, a decent job of, of putting something together that has been really functional for me. Now you notice that there's some insulation on the walls and this is going to get uh, sheathed to look uh, just like the rest of the house over here. Uh, I just, you know, it was not a high priority, you know, as winter was creeping in so I didn't bother getting the uh, the wallboards on here but ultimately it will have nice wallboards like everything else. But it, it does allow you to see the insulation and that might, you know, make you question well, why do you have insulation on a shed? Well, uh, a couple reasons. One is that it allows me to store things in the shed shed that you wouldn't want to freeze. You know, if I have paint and things that I, you know, you wouldn't want to put in a freezing environment, I can put them in this shed, both because of the insulation, uh, the solar hot water panels do introduce a little bit of heat into the structure, and also because it has an actual basement. Uh, th these are four foot walls that go down under the ground, uh, and there's a lot of geothermal heat that comes up out of the ground that helps to keep the structure warm, and the insulation keeps the heat in there. So it's worked out really well. Uh, additionally, this uh, structure could be used as a tiny house. Uh, it's 140 square feet. You got the basement for storage and there's even a loft in the top where you could put a bed. Uh, but for now, what I'm using it for is its intended purpose, which is storage. Uh, this has been a great place for just putting all sorts of things uh, during the building process. Anything that we were wanting to move from the uh, other house into, uh, you know, to this new location. I was able to bring uh, pretty much every single day whenever I was coming over to build, I'd fill up the car and I'd have a place to, to put all this kind of stuff. And it's stuff you wouldn't want to have outside. There's bedding, there's blankets, there's mittens, there's hats, you know, all, all sorts of things. And also things like paint that, you know, I wouldn't be able to keep in here if it was going to be below freezing. You get a quick little peek down over here at uh, the basement. There's a kind of a trap door uh, held up by that little piece of nylon uh, right here uh, so it doesn't uh, just you know fall open and lean on things and uh, down in that basement uh, you can go down there's gravel down on the floor and there's more storage down there now it's a little bit humid down there and I have a dehumidifier that can run uh, under the uh, under the floor here uh, that's run by solar panels that are sitting out on the uh, uh, the ground out, uh, to the south side of this uh, structure uh, but what I've decided to do is just anything that I put in the basement, I just make it things that don't particularly mind if they're a little bit humid. I'm not going to put bedding and blankets, things that will get mildew on them and everything. So this has worked out really well. Great for storage, great for holding the solar panels up there. And overall, it's uh, nice to know that once we kind of get all this stuff out of there, you could use it as a tiny little house someday if you wanted to. The next thing I wanted to show you is just kind of the front face of the house and everything that's working over there. We're going to come along. We're on the west side of the house right now. And uh, we're coming over to the uh, the south side. Now you can see on the south side of the house, got all of, all of our windows pretty much are all on the south side of the house. They let a lot of sunlight in. They let a minuscule amount of heat in because of the uh, requirements for building the house were kind of prevented from using windows that would allow heat into the house. That was pretty silly, uh, I thought, but you know, you know, the environmental rules serve some sort of a purpose. They just didn't serve my purposes very well. I am thinking about this area right here, this vertical space here, and the corresponding one on the other side of the house, of putting in uh, kind of some solar heat collection panels, kind of like little well, not little, giant solar ovens, about three feet wide, maybe, uh, about 15 feet tall, that would help to collect some of the uh, sun energy when it's sunny out and uh, vent it into the house. That's a future project that I'm thinking about doing, uh, but I think it could uh, go a long way to make it so we have a lot less of that smoke coming out of our, 
our chimney if we can just you know run the fire on days when you know it's been cloudy for a while or something like that that'd be pretty cool and uh, it would uh, really serve the interests of the environmental protection rules that uh, you know prevented me from putting in the solar collecting uh, windows in the first place uh, we're going to go into the greenhouse which is working really really well you'll see there's a door here uh, you know this wall is another one that we've Yet to, <laughs> yet to cover up again. I uh, didn't want to spend a lot of time on uh, you know, things like that while we were trying to get in before the winter. But um, the, we did put the critical things on like windows and doors. And what's great about the windows and doors here is that they're really uh, helping us to uh, keep the space nice and warm. Uh, even when it's like, we've had like 20 degree days outside, but if it's sunny and the sun's coming in here, it's pushing 60 in this space. Now, at the moment, uh, it's not much of a greenhouse. As you can see, it's, it's more storage. Uh, we're using this uh, as a uh, storage location. There's a Bowflex. I, you know, I used to use the Bowflex. I don't know if I'm gonna keep using it. I've found some other things I like doing for exercise. But it's a storage space. Uh, but in the future, we're gonna be able to use this for all sorts of crazy things. You can have vining greenery and everything. There's no shortage of headspace in here. It's a really, really nice space. One thing we're also using it for in here is uh, firewood. Uh, we've been collecting firewood off the land here. One great thing about burning wood for fuel is that you can just pick up sticks off the ground and uh, that's kind of a nice way of heating your house. One other thing over here, which is kind of important, is this box right here. Because this is kind of an entry point, we're using this as a COVID decontamination chamber. Uh, those are UVC lights in there. It's a really easy way of sanitizing groceries or mail or anything else that comes to the house uh, without having to use bleach or all that kind of messy stuff. It's really nice just to be able to throw stuff in there, flip the uh, UVC lights on, and it, uh, it makes it so that everything is, uh, you know, germ-free when we bring it into the house. So far, so good. We've had two years in running of having absolutely no illness in the house. And, uh, you know, having a house with a, a little kid that plays with his friends and all that kind of stuff. You know, that's saying a lot. If you've had an entire household with kids getting together and have no illness for two years in a row, that's, uh, that's a pretty good accomplishment. And it's all from social distancing and masking. Uh, so what's going on in here is uh, we've just been finishing up the space. I think uh, at the end of the series that showed uh, sort of you know, the process of building this place, this was a, you know, it's still kind of a construction space at the end of that. But we've really started moving things, things in. Plants make a big difference. Rugs make a big difference. And uh, the whole space is really starting to come together. The workflow of working in this kitchen, with it being so proximal to the wood stove, is awesome. Uh, as you can see on top of the wood stove right now, we've got a little... Uh, wood stove oven that sits on top. Now later on, I've actually have already purchased this. We have an oven that is going to sit in line with this uh, that will essentially be a permanent oven for our wood stove. Whenever we want to cook something, we can just throw it right in there. It's already pre-warmed whenever the wood stove is going. But this workflow is working really, really great. You've got the kitchen and it's got the sink and the refrigerator right there. There is an electric oven in the kitchen, though we you know, hardly ever use it and we're really close to the wood stove, so it's easy to just go from the wood stove to the kitchen back and forth. I've lived in other houses in the past where the wood stove was nowhere near this close to the kitchen, and this is a, it's a real treat having it uh, with this degree of proximity uh, to what you're trying to uh, uh, work on. Uh, over here is another thing that's important to be proximal to the kitchen, it's the pantry. Let's pop in here, because this is a really critical part of the house. This is... A pantry that I'm really pleased with. Uh, we were able to get an awful lot in here. It really feels a lot like a uh, like a grocery store when you walk in here. Yeah, I mean, every grocery store I go to has like, uh, you know, concrete walls and pressure tanks in the back. <laughs> okay, it's not exactly like being a grocery store, uh, they, you know, but it is, there's a lot here and it's nice to be able to store this much, this much stuff and to not have to run out all the time. And it's also nice to be able to buy things in bulk because things are always... They cost less when you buy them in bulk, uh, you know, pretty much all the time. And, uh, you know, when you, when things are on sale, you can buy up a lot of it. So then pretty much everything that you're eating is stuff that is uh, is on sale. This space here is working really, really well. We have 28-inch uh, deep shelves over here, 14-inch deep shelves over here. And we've kind of, uh, you know, allocated the space, uh, you know, for different height items. Like, in fact, these juices here, they're on a shelf that was custom made for for their height. The one other, uh, two other items I want to 
Okay, yeah, no, three other items over here I wanted to highlight. One is uh, this cylindrical tank here. This is the holding tank for the hot water. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can see some of the, the piping that, uh, that comes out of the, the, the back of the tank. I know it's a little dark in here. We are going to be adding some more lights later, but for now it's just a little bit dark. Uh, that is working out really great. Uh, one thing I want to add to that, though, is some more insulation. I have a uh, thermal uh, infrared camera, and I was in here, and boy, does that tank look hot. Uh, it, it, I'm losing a lot of heat through the walls of that tank. I'm sure there's insulation in that tank to try to keep stuff uh, warm in there. But it, uh, it's losing heat, so I'm going to be wrapping that in some more insulation. Right next to it is uh, something that's working on the opposite direction, trying to keep things cool. We have a chest freezer in here. Uh, I am new to chest freezers. I had always just kind of made do with the tiny little freezer at the top of a refrigerator. And uh, boy, am I loving this. I, I really like the idea that you can go to the grocery store, and when things that are in the freezer section are on sale... I can actually stock up on it because I know I've got the, the chest freezer there. Uh, right next to that, uh, it's actually something I've been working on this morning, uh, is another rack. Now I built uh, you know, all of these shelves just out of uh, you know, lumber and wall boards and everything. I just went with a store-bought shelf over here and uh, that, that was you know, primarily just so I could get something really quickly uh, and wouldn't have to build the whole thing. Uh, this is going to be used for storage containers. Uh, you know, all the kinds of things that you would be storing food in. Canning jars, because I, I do love doing canning. Uh, you know, and, and those empty jars take up just as much space if they're empty as they do if they have uh, food in them. So you need a place to store all that stuff. And I figured this would be a nice place for it because it's proximal to the kitchen where you're going to be processing, you know, whatever you want to store. So I, you know, I figured I would do all the uh, storage can containers, uh, you know, in this place right here. All right, let's step out of the pantry and let's move to some other parts of the house. Now, at the end of this video, I am going to be taking you over to our root cellar, which is also a fallout shelter. We're going to do that at the end. But first, I want to buzz you around this place. And before we go upstairs, I want to take a moment to notice uh, you know, this, this space right here. Now, this, you know, you guys know I'm into uh, prepping and preparedness, you know, keeping your family safe during an emergency. There is no earthly reason why it's necessary to have this ungodly amount of headroom in a structure. But boy, does it feel really nice. You know, when you're cooped up indoors, you know, it's been really cold out. It's like, you know, icy rain or it's like, you know, seven degrees is a high. It's nice to have a nice, comfortable space to live in because, you know, you want to keep your body safe, but you also want to protect your spirit. And, and you know, living in a cave, you know, again, we're going to go to that fall shelter in a little bit. Living in a cave, uh, you know, doesn't lend itself to, you know, a healthy emotional state. And I like the idea of having this kind of headroom, having this kind of stretch space. Uh, when I was... Uh, saving up for building my first house many years ago. I lived in a, a camping travel trailer at a campground, which was really great in the summers, really great in the springs, pretty good in the fall, pretty awful in the winter. Uh, you know, you couldn't even stretch your arms up without hitting the ceiling, and it really instilled in me a sense of wanting to live in a place where it had a decent amount of headspace. It also instilled in me the value of having a wood stove because while I was in my travel trailer, the heater broke. And uh, it was pretty awful. You know, you had a squirrel cage and all these moving parts. And uh, when they break, you know, you can't heat your house. So I, I really like the idea of having a heater that doesn't really have much for moving parts. You throw in a stick, you burn it, and there you go. All right, getting to the top of the stairs here. We're in our library, one of my favorite parts of the whole house. Now you can see it's starting to get populated with all sorts of books here. Uh, not all the books in the house are in this library, uh, but the majority of them are. Up along the top, we have, uh, you know, adult fiction kinds of stuff uh, over there. Uh, coming over here, there are travel books, one of my favorite sections. Uh, this is all international travel books. You can dream of all the different places you'd love to go in the world. And as a, someone that's into prepping and preparedness, I'm not all about hiding up in my house all the time. I like to live my life, and someday I would love to go to Australia. Why not? And all these other places. Down below that, we have, uh, you know, stuff for, like, you know, God's chosen country, USA. Because <laughs> God favors the United States. I've, I've, I've seen that on a couple bumper stickers. Um, and, uh, and all sorts of other sections here as well. It's, it's not all just uh, stuff about, uh, you know, you know, planning, preparedness, and all that. It's like, uh, you know, anything you might want to do to enrich your life. We have a section on English and literature. There's a section on art and history. There's even a book about comics there. Different languages you might want to learn. I'm not going to go through every section here, although I will highlight this one right here, uh, because this is a pretty important one. This is the section about 
uh, prepping, preparedness, living off the land, all sorts of, uh, uh, you know, camping uh, topics. Also, uh, architecture, how to build. You know, there are books here about how we built the house that we're in right now. Uh, so, you know, we have uh, books on all different types of topics, and not just um, uh, nonfiction books. There's also books, uh, you know, that, like I said, there's adult fiction, there's, uh, you know, young adult fiction, science books. We do homeschooling here, so it's nice to have access to all these things. Although, uh, the topic of Hiroshima came up the other day, and I went to the encyclopedias. You can actually see that H is pulled out up here. They didn't have a picture from Hiroshima after the bomb went off. You know, my, my boy was curious about what it would look like if a nuclear bomb were detonated. Um, it didn't come up in Hiroshima. I mean, they had some really lovely pictures of Hiroshima, but, but I was a little bit surprised that that wasn't a part of the history that they thought was worthwhile sharing in the history book. Um, let's check around to some other spots in here, in the, uh, the bathroom here. Uh, lots of stuff is developing in this room. We've got... Uh, just above the tub, some more tile is going in that has a couple different purposes. One is to make it look awesome. I think it looks pretty awesome. Uh, but uh, additional to that, uh, you know, there, there's always a little spatter from the shower that gets up on the walls here. Now, if these walls were just wood, they'd eventually get kind of mildew. Even if you water treated them, they, they'd get a little mildew. So putting the stone up there uh, is going to protect from, you know, having your wood get mildew on it. But also, like I said, it looks, looks pretty awesome. Let's spin around over here. Uh, right behind the door we have some storage and that's a lot of what I've been working on since we moved in is storage spaces you know being able to actually put stuff not just to have the volume of space you need but having shelves and here are some shelves that I built here now these are right over the washing machine and now you'll notice that the washing machine doesn't have a dryer over it a lot of people would put the dryer in that space and you could put a dryer in that space but I have not used a dryer for well over 10 years uh, we always are hanging up our clothes inside on racks or outside on a line or something like that. And if you can go without a dryer, which is totally possible, I live in New England, it gets cold, it gets wet, it's humid here all the time, but my clothes do eventually dry. It's really not that big a deal. Uh, you save a lot of energy, There's, you save uh, a lot of pollution isn't happening because you're not running that dryer. Uh, you save a lot of money because you never had to buy a dryer in the first place. And on top of that, something that you get not talking about saving, something you get is look at all this free storage space that is really useful uh, in the bathroom. We get to put that, uh, you know, populate that stuff with stuff that we really need. I just throw, just a shout out right here. When I was making these shelves, I figured if they were just about a foot high, that would fit pretty much anything. It did not ever cross my mind that there would be a toothbrush that was slightly longer and would not totally fit in there. I, I, how long are people going to make toothbrushes? It's like an arms race. They just get longer and longer. Some Someday mankind will make a toothbrush so long, it'll destroy the whole world. All right, uh, coming into here in the media room, uh, we ended up deciding to put all of our media stuff in the wall there. And now, this is a little cubby that extends above where the uh, washing machine is. Uh, and I was able to make that little cubby because we don't have the dryer there. It's worked out really well. Initially, we were planning on having kind of like some kind of a shelf or something here there's a hole where the HDMI jack was going to be because the HDMI wire kind of runs through the floor over here blah 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 does some crazy things and then gets over to the back of the monitor here um, originally we were planning on having the decks there but in practice and this comes down to something that comes up a lot when you build is like you create something and then you think about it and you're like you know I, I, I want to do this a little differently or this isn't exactly how I was envisioning it, so I want to change something. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's great to try to avoid uh, getting into that situation. But, you know, the idea that you learn something and you're smarter today than when you were yesterday, there's nothing wrong with that. And, uh, you know, we realized if we put a shelf here, it just would have protruded out and it would have made it kind of hard to get into this area. So we decided to kind of reroute the electric wires uh, and the HDMI, and we got them up to there. And we were able to reroute because into prepping and preparedness, I left some extra stuff, uh, some extra slack in the line, and it was enough to get us all the way up to here. Uh, we have a map here because we do a lot of the homeschool stuff here. If we're watching a documentary, it's nice to be able to point things out on the map, uh, you know. And again, we got the library right over, over there as well. Before we go to the third floor, we're just going to pop. Uh, into just a couple more spaces here. One I wanted to highlight uh, just briefly is uh, Amber's bedroom here. Uh, this was originally intended to be my office, kind of a small office. It's a small space. I think it's only like uh, something like eight feet by uh, maybe uh, 12 feet, eight feet by 12 feet or something like that. Um, but, you know, it's perfectly serviceable as a bedroom. Amber wanted to just have a small bedroom and, you know, realistically you only spend 
you know, eight hours a, a day in your bedroom and you're asleep during most of that. So who really cares whether it's like giant or luxurious or whatever, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a space where you're sleeping. So, uh, so she's been in there. Uh, we're still kind of building her bed here. Here's a, the bed frame kind of vertical, uh, just kind of leaning up against the wall there, just using the mattress on the floor. But you know, there's plenty of space for what she needs to do. She also has a desk in there where she does some work. So speaking of luxurious spaces and how you don't need them, let's check out my bedroom because it's wicked luxurious with space that I really don't need. <laughs> Though I am using uh, some of it for my offices where I edit all my videos. It's still a little bit messy in here. It's you know one of the uh, least important places for me to finish up. Um, you know, I'm kind of slowly doing it, but. Uh, uh, you know, there's no no huge rush. You can see a window uh, in this room goes into the eastern greenhouse over here, and my bed is in the same state of just being on the floor. We have not created the uh, uh, the bed frame for it uh, yet. Uh, right over here, just want to mention a couple things uh, in terms of prepping and preparedness. It's oftentimes nice to have a flashlight next to your bed if you ever need one. And this uh, lamp that we got has a USB charging port right on it. Um, so that's kind of a nice thing to have. Another nice thing to have if, you know, anybody's ever, you know, messing with your house and you hear someone like downstairs maybe having a firearm by your head, by your bed, if you're into, into that kind of stuff, could be kind of a useful place to have them instead of like, you know, somewhere else like in your basement in a safe or something like that. So... I have that right next to the bed just in case. You know, it's like, you know, you don't want that to happen, but if you ever heard someone smashing glass downstairs, uh, you know, it'd be kind of, it would, I think I would feel a little bit better knowing I at least had that. Still an awful situation. You don't want that to happen, but, you know, better to be somewhat prepared than not at all. Okay, top floor. Uh, you can see that we got some more books. Let's head up there. Uh, these are all the kids' books for River, because River's room is up here. Uh, this was kind of a late ad. Originally, I was going to have all the books down in the library, but we realized we just had too many, and this seemed like a really good place to put in two shelves, one on either side of this little closet door. And you can see we're, we're still organizing things uh, as we uh, put everything together here. Let's just pop over into River's room through uh, the most interesting door in the house. We had to nip the corner of it off to fit it in with this, uh, this roof joist here, but I think it makes it kind of interesting, the fact that it was like that. Uh, in this space, uh, River's got his, his bunk bed. Uh, that's not, we don't have like a, a hidden, mysterious extra kid living here. River just like the idea of a bunk bed, and if he ever has a friend over, there's already a, a bed for them. Uh, a couple different things going on in this, this room. One of them uh, is these vents right up here. These uh, vents grab the hottest air from the house that comes up from the wood stove that uh, collects up in the, you know, the top several feet of this room which could make this room kind of uncomfortable in the, you know, in the wintertime, if it gets too hot up here, or in the summertime. And what it does is there is a conduit here. This is kind of like a false ceiling uh, where there's a space behind there. And it runs all the way back down here to this vent here. Now, you'll notice at the moment, it doesn't actually connect to that vent. It just goes to uh, this hole right here. And I need to uh, finish kind of boxing uh, the rest of the space in, but eventually there'll be a contiguous uh, pathway for the uh, for the air to be drawn all the way over into this this vent right here. We're going to build a little more infrastructure around it. We're going to put a uh, inline uh, filtering system, so we're keeping uh, dust out of the lines. And uh, this is the way that we are going to be taking all the hot air from up here and pumping it down under the floor to heat the floor downstairs. So it makes this area more comfortable because it's not as hot, and it makes downstairs more comfortable because it's not as cold. I learned that uh, from the first time that I built a house. That whenever you're heating with a wood stove, there's a real tendency for it to get hot at the top and not nearly as uh, comfortable as you would like down on the lower floors. So being able to circulate that, uh, that air uh, through the space really helps, and running it under the floor really helps to kind of heat the floor and keep it warm. The last room here on our tour is the storage room, and this is working out really well. This was actually originally going to be the, the second bedroom. This was uh, The idea was that this would be Amber's room, but uh, there's an awful lot of space here, and I'm happy to be able to utilize it for uh, general storage. You can see there's a lot of empty uh, shelf space here. We're still kind of populating this, kind of sorting through things. One uh, thing when we were moving was that, you know, we would just throw things in boxes, didn't really organize it all that well, and, uh, you know, we're kind of going through things here. But it's really nice to have all this space, because once it does get organized, uh, it's nice to have backup stuff. These are extra filters for the, the air filter uh, units that we use here. Uh, the uh, 
the fan that we use to circulate the air from the, uh, the top floor down to the bottom. This is a backup fan. You know, if that fan ever went down, and it'd be really nice to have a backup all ready to go because, you know, like, who knows? Like, it, when COVID happened, there was, you know, there were issues with getting supplies. You know, there was stuff you just couldn't get. Uh, and, you know, knowing that you have that backup tool ready to go, you know, whenever you need it. I think it's a good feeling, uh, especially when it's stuff that's important to you. I mean, if it's something that's like, you know, nail polish, it's like, oh, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't go a day without whatever nail polish I wear. I don't mean that as a dude, but like for women that wear nail polish, I guess some dudes wear nail polish too. But, you know, for uh, discretionary stuff like that, it's not a big deal. But for things that really impact the quality of your life, like a, a vent fan that allows you to make it comfortable on the top floor, comfortable on the bottom floor, things like that. I think it's important to have extra of it just in case, you know, you run out. Here are some bathroom things that are kind of important to have. Now, there's a lot of Clorox wipes. We had stocked up on those uh, before the pandemic. And, you know, honestly, we haven't used that many of them. We've used other methods of cleaning things. I, I think they're pretty convenient when you go out, uh, you know, to have some of those on you, but haven't really used that many. I suppose we're saving those for the next pandemic. Uh, and we have other, other bathroom things uh, here as well. But the idea is we're, we're starting to organize things and really get use out of the out of the space. Now I mentioned that in this video I was going to tell you some of the things that were working well and some of the things that have not been working all that great. And so far I've talked just about all the things that have you know worked out reasonably well. There is one problem that we've had uh, you know with uh, you know moving in here and it's not something that was surprising to me. I knew that it was coming. I knew that it was a blind spot that I wasn't preparing for. And that problem is firewood. Uh, you know, the house has a lot of insulation on it. We're doing okay. We only have a couple more months of winter here. And I mean, in fact, we really only have like one more solid month of winter and then, you know, we're going to start getting into spring. But we're getting low on firewood that is dry. Uh, I'm going to turn you around, look out the window here. Uh, right out there, there is a lump in the snow. There's a lot of lumps. But this particular lump right here, this lump right there, that uh, is snow on top of a tarp on top of a bunch of dry wood. Now I stacked that wood up over the summer and I threw a tarp over it and uh, that's our supply of firewood but it's covered in snow, it's covered in ice, it's you know it's hard to get at so at the moment it's kind of a situation where we don't have that much firewood and it takes a long time to get new firewood so we're just trying to stretch what we have and as I need I'm kind of going in there but that's that's really our big challenge is the fact that we're so busy building to get ready to move in before the winter there were things like that that I knew I was kind of just leaving off to the side that you know I hope they don't bite us too badly but that's like one of the challenges that you know while we were building you know it would have been great if I could have gotten more firewood. I could have bought firewood and had it, you know, just delivered, cut and stacked. But I've got so many dead or felled trees here. It seemed really crazy to buy wood when there's so much of it just lying on the ground for free. So once we get through this uh, this season, you know, we're going to be fine going into the future. But that was kind of a challenge. Uh, uh, trying to balance, you know, because I knew I was going to need some firewood, but over the summer I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it because, you know, we really wanted to build to get in here. So I hope that gives you a sense of how things are going for us over, you know, the past month or so. We're continuing to do more projects. I mean, just look right behind you right here. You know, the windows don't have trim yet and the windows don't have blinds yet. Uh, we pre-bought all the blinds that are going to go on these windows and those are going to be providing us with lots of services. One of them is that they're going to help insulate our interior space uh, during the nighttime. We can close those blinds or thermal blinds and they'll keep a lot more of our warmth in the house. Uh, another benefit from those blinds is that, well, you know, when it's dark out there and you got lights on in here, you kind of feel like you're on display. In fact, a friend of mine recently was saying, you know, a sniper could really pick you off really easily <laughs> from outside. Now, and while I, I don't think we have a real problem with snipers in our woods out here, you know, it's mostly like coyotes and deer, um, y you still kind of feel like you're on display. So I'm looking forward to getting all those blinds up, uh, if only, again, to start insulating up these windows. But uh, overall, things are working really well. We got a lot of projects moving into the future. And the very last thing that I want to show you guys before we depart is, as promised, the root cellar slash fallout shelter. We're going to exit through the uh, eastern greenhouse over here. There's greenhouses on both sides of the, uh, of the house structure, which are mirror images of each other. 
This one actually tends to be a little cooler because this one gets morning sun and is somewhat blocked by trees. The other one tends to be warmer, it gets afternoon sun, and we've got better uh, sun exposure over there. But at the moment, this greenhouse also is being used for storage, but this one's more like uh, construction stuff. This is extra stuff that we're using for building, tools, things like that. But again, uh, over time, both of these greenhouses are going to start turning a little bit more green. Let's head out this way and we'll get over to that uh, root cellar. We've got a little path in the snow. The only way to get between the house and the root cellar is outside. There had been some consideration for the idea of building a tunnel between them that you could crawl through. Uh, ultimately, it just seemed too crazy to me. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know, you know. Uh, there were some apples in this greenhouse the other day that I ended up not getting because it was nighttime and I hadn't shoveled this path and I really would have liked those apples, which I probably would have crawled through a tunnel to get, but I wasn't willing to come outside. Uh, the green, uh, the, I'm sorry, I keep calling the root cellar greenhouse. Uh, the root cellar uh, has a padlock on it or the ability to have a padlock. I have not been using that because the risk of the lock getting kind of jammed up with ice seems pretty close to 100% and the risk of somebody coming in and breaking in and stealing our shit is pretty close to 0% uh, chance. So, you know, kind of balancing the two risks uh, out with each other, uh, you know, I've decided that, you know, I'll just leave the lock off because it's very unlikely anyone's going to break in there. Uh, you'll notice that the, uh, the door of it is kind of nice looking. It's kind of like a little hobbit house and we got these little, these little black pipes. These are uh, light tubes that bring light into the structure. So uh, it's a little bit of illumination when we go in there. So let's let's pop in the last place on our tour. Now I said that this was a root cellar and a fallout shelter, and that is true. It can be either of those two functions. At the moment, we're using it as a root cellar. That's its, its highest purpose right now. Uh, we've got lots of uh, food stored uh, on these shelves, but the majority of those shelves are actually filled with empty jars. If you, you recall when we were in the pantry, I said that I was building those racks for empty jars. That's this, this is what most of the stuff on these shelves is, is just, just empty jars. So a lot of this stuff is going to get moved down that path that I just walked down into the other place and uh, get stored inside so we're going to have more more free space in here. Uh, what you do see in here is a big, this big stack here. This is the 6,000 watts of solar panels that are going to be going up on the roof soon. And off to the other side are jugs of air. These are jugs that could be holding water. At the moment they're just holding air and uh, the reason that I have these is that if this if this structure did want to be used as a fallout shelter, if God forbid there was some kind of a situation where you feared that there was going to be radioactive fallout outside, you could protect yourself in here, but that door over there that we went through, while, de uh, while decorative and you know really delightful looking, <laughs> makes it look like a little hobbit house in here. That you know that's not a lead lined door or anything. So ra radio uh, radioactive energy could be coming through that door, and one way of blocking that is with uh, you know like I said, lead, or rock, or concrete, or water. So uh, if we wanted to block up this door to make it so that uh, you know energy wasn't coming through the door, wasn't irradiating people that were sheltering in place in here, you could take these stackable water jugs, fill them all up with water, and make a uh, little water wall that would, uh, that would protect you from you know, radiological energy coming in through this entrance here. Again, God forbid nothing like that ever happens. Uh, when we built this place, it was right uh, when uh, Donald Trump was seeming like he was going to be the new president, and I, who really knew which way that was going to go? As it turns out, Donald Trump was like the first president in a long time to not start wars, and that was pretty awesome. Uh, but, you know, back then you just didn't know, and being into prepping and preparedness, you know, you, you think about risks that might happen, and if they're not too big of a hassle, you know, you, even if it's a low likelihood, you want to prepare against it. Now this was a huge hassle putting this thing together, but I always knew that we were going to get that benefit of it being a root cellar, you know, whether or not there was a, you know, nuclear, you know, fallout issue or not, I knew that we were going to be able to use that as a, a root cellar. And that is a, the, the best kind of preps are the kind of preps that you can use for all sorts of different benefits and the, and the sorts of things that, you know, you're going to see a quality of life increase whether or not anything bad happens. You know, whether or not there are shortages at grocery stores, whether or not there's a nuclear exchange, that root cellar is always really helpful because if I go to the grocery store and, you know, say like grapefruits are on sale and I want to buy more than I can fit in the refrigerator over here, I can throw things in that root cellar and it works really well 
as a refrigerator. It's 39 degrees, 38, 39 degrees in there in the winter time. And, uh, you know, it increases the quality of my life, allows me to save money by buying things in bulk when they're on sale at a grocery store. So I hope that this has been a helpful tour. I'm going to do more tours going forward into the future so you guys can kind of see, you know, how things develop over time. Like I said, we have a lot more, more projects that we want to be working on uh, over time and introducing them here. Uh, but, you know, you only get so much time in the day and you, you know, you got to pick the most important ones as you go. So the least important ones are coming up. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.